Amen. We've been speaking a, a little bit lately about uh, overcoming, breaking the strongholds, smashing through the, the walls. How many people know there's a few walls out there? There's a few obstacles. Anybody else find an obstacle that uh, tries to stop you, to steal your joy, steal the victory from your life? And, and that we've been talking about David, how he, how he met with the Goliath and, and uh, you know, just that, that whole circumstance, that whole situation where where the armies of the living God sort of backed away from the fight. And I've been encouraging the church that so we've got to go in there and fight. Amen? We've got to go in there and fight. Donald Trump got into a lot of trouble because he told his people to rise up. And uh, some people uh, took it literally. <laughs> but we do have to fight. We've got to stand against the enemy. Uh, God has fighting for us. Do you believe that? How many people believe that God is fighting for us? And so, you know, I'm just going to continue on that a little bit. But there's something I believe that God wants to break open this morning and uh, bring a bit of light around that a, a particular subject. It's all about His presence. His presence is very, very important. Amen. So, Father, today we just ask you that you would help us as we as we go through your Word. And Lord, the songs that we've been singing today they're they're actually a, a sermon in every song. There's a truth in every song. There's a there's a message in every song. If we could. Just grab hold of that, that God is fighting for us. And, and Lord, all the, the, the words of those songs, I can't remember them all now, but as we were singing them, I just saw that it was, it was just like the Word of God just coming forth and, and encouraging us to, to rise up, because I believe that this is an hour for the church in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So to overcome, there's a, certain, there's a few things that, that you and I have to do that... Uh, you know, if we just sit back passively and believe that, that someday God's just going to come and He's going to fix everything up, that's not the way it is. Uh, God expects the church. He's given us weaponry. He's given us tools of our trade. He's given us stuff that you and I need to be able to put into practice so that we can uh, overcome and, and uh, stop the enemy in Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? So to overcome, uh, we must be bold. Bold. Boldness comes in, in, a, in a particular way as you, as you become bold and, and you start to rise up and you start to, to, to declare what Jesus says about you, even in the midst of a storm. I heard of a man once that, that had a, 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 a fairly big business and it was an earth-moving business and things like that. And He's right in the middle of digging trenches and uh, it was a massive job. And, and, uh, but all of a sudden these massive clouds started coming over and uh, if the storm would have hit, it would have destroyed uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work that he'd done because the trenches would have been all filled up and they would have caved in and so forth. He would have had it done it all again. And that man, when he saw it, he, he just didn't let fear grip him. He saw the situation. It was very, very real. It wasn't something that it was just in his imagination. There was a storm coming that had the potential to destroy all the work that he had done. But he said that, he, that this day he just walked out and he stood his ground and he looked at that storm and he spoke to the storm and he commanded it in Jesus' name that it would not come near him, that it would not touch his business. And uh, it, it, this is Brian Marshall. Most of you would, a lot of you would know Brian. And he said that as he prayed the prayer, within a few minutes, he said the storm split and it, one went one, it went one way and it went another way and it never touched his property. You see, you've got to be bold. You can't just say, oh my God, all my work's done. It's all finished. Man, I'm sick. I'm this. And, and give up. No, you've got to become bold. You've got to stand in your situation. You've got to be able to speak into that situation and believe God. Otherwise, we will go down. You must understand where our strength comes from. You see, that wasn't Brian. It wasn't him just saying those words. Uh, but he plugged into something. You see, when you plug into something, it's like a, when you plug a lead into a, into a power source, that lead really on its own is nothing. It's just a lead and it, doesn't, it can't do anything. But when you plug it into the power source, all of a sudden it becomes a power. It becomes the same power that, that's coming out of that wall and, and it does the job that needs to be done. And when you plug into something, you plug into the realm of the Spirit, all of a sudden your words become like dynamite. They become explosive. They, they, they cut through. They knock the walls down. They smash 
at whatever the enemy is trying to do. So you've got to know where your strength comes from. Our strength comes from the Lord. How many people believe that today? Psalm 27 verse 1, it says, The Lord is the strength of my life. Listen to this. Of whom shall I be afraid? See, that, that, just in that little segment, just in those few lines, there's an amazing amount of truth. And if we start to live like that, you will start to overcome and you'll start to break through. You see, there's nothing more that brings discouragement around your life is when failure gets around your life. It's when you do nothing and you just accept the consequences. Friend, we cannot just accept the consequences. We've got to rise up and we've got to stand our ground. The Lord my God is my strength. When I plug into the power source, I become the same as the source. You might say, oh, you, you can't. Yes, you can. You become the same as the source. Jesus, in his word, these things that I do, you shall do also. You become the same as the source. The source of your power will flow through you, flow into you, and it will flow out of you. Not a matter of just coming into us, it's also going out of us. Amen. It is, the lead comes through there, but now it will operate the electric saw. Now it will operate whatever, you, whatever you're going to use. So you plug into that. The strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the source of our strength. Do you believe that today? 1 Samuel 17, 24, when David came on the scene, there was a Goliath. He was out there roaring and raging and carrying on. And the, and the men, as he walked on, on the scene, they said, Have you seen this one? Have you seen this Goliath? Have you seen him? You see, if, you keep, if people try to get your focus on the problem, on what's going on, if you just keep looking at the problem, you'll go down. But you see, you can't look at the problem. You've got to look beyond the problem. You've got to look to him who is the source of our strength who is a source of our power. He is the most powerful force on this planet. It's, it's more powerful than any, any atomic bomb or anything that man can create. He is more powerful than anything you and I would ever imagine. You see, when David came on the scene, he was shocked. He wasn't shocked so much at the size of the Goliath but at the reaction of the armies of the living God. Friend, when the enemy comes, fear normally comes over our lives. When the doctor says this about you, when, when this goes on, or whatever it might be, things can get around your life. But we've got to go beyond that. We've got to look beyond that. I can't keep looking at the problem. I can't keep looking at, at whatever the problem is. I've got to get my eyes off the problem and I've got to get my eyes on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? I've got my eyes on Jesus Christ. And uh, they were so intimidated by the enemy. And the, what happens when you get that intimidation comes over your life and when you're just looking at the problem, the anointing that God has given you to destroy the enemy disappears and fear takes its place. Something has to take its place. Fear comes in and the anointing and the gift that God has put on your life to win and overcome. You see, we've been singing songs about overcoming, triumph, all this sort of stuff. And yet, if we start to really, if you allow your mind, your mind says, but I'm not living there. You see, we, I might not be living what I'm talking today, but what if I keep pushing through, I'll get there. If I keep believing, I'll get there. I may not be seeing the revival that I believe that is coming to Australia. I'm not seeing the revival that I believe is coming to the Sunshine Coast. I'm not seeing the revival that I believe is going to come to Global Connections. I'm not seeing it yet, but if I keep believing it and if I keep confessing it, if I'm not looking at what the enemy's doing, and I'm not looking at empty seats right now, but I'm looking at angels sitting in those seats, amen? If I just keep my eyes off the negative and get my eyes on the positive, then God will help me and we'll see the victory, amen? 
We can't look at the negative. When, G, when, when David came on the scene, there's this young man that's full of the Holy Ghost, full of the power of God. He's, he's been killing bears and lions and, and doing stuff and all this sort of thing. This, this guy that's anointed, he's been anointed by the prophet to be king over all of Israel. He's got the touch of God on his life. Immediately, they try to get his attention off that and have a look at the size of this guy. Have you seen the man? Have you seen him? Have you seen the problems of this world? Now, yes, I have, but I've also seen the glory of God, and I've seen and I've read about the promises of God, and I believe that God is going to move by His Spirit, and we're going to see a revival on the Sunshine Coast in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to see this church filled with youth. We're going to see this church filled with kids. We're going to see people born again, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to see deliverance. We're going to see it in Jesus' name because God has promised us that. They're intimidated, and the intimidation uh, left. But immediately, this is what David's response was, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this, this half-beat that's come to defy the armies of the living God? And they said, is there not a cause? When the church... When a church rises up in Australia and overthrows the enemy, many others will rise up and push the enemy back. This is what happened with David. When David went out and slew the enemy, all the guys that were in the tents, all the guys that were, were full of fear, all of a sudden they saw this young man. They saw him uh, carrying uh, the, the head of Goliath saw him dragging it down the street, they rose up. Faith got back inside them. If ever there's something that needs to happen to the church right now is that we need another deluge of faith where we trust and obey, where we believe God, where, where, we, where we somehow or other put God first and the power of God and His Word instead of leaving it behind. In 2 Corinthians 2.11, it says this, let lest Satan should take advantage of us. I know he's talking here about, about forgiveness and things like that, and, and I believe that every sin is the same. Unbelief is a sin. And if we continue in unbelief or if we continue in negativity or whatever it might be around our lives, if we continue in that, Satan will take advantage of you. He will take advantage of you. But the Word of God says, but we are not ignorant of his devices or his schemes. The devil is a schemer. He puts things in our way. He tries to, to make the problems look so big. Tries to do that. But see, what we need to do is we need to come back to our purpose. The purpose of the church is not, it's not a bless me club. It's not a social group or a place we just go to. That is what it's not. We are the church, and we are to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. We are to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 103, we know it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all His benefits, and forget not all of His benefits. A lot of people come to church to get healed. A lot of people get, come to church to find a wife. A lot of people come to church to just because there's nowhere else to go. Some people come for other reasons. But you see, Psalm 103 talks about the benefits are not the purpose. The benefits of, of that are a byproduct of a relationship with Jesus Christ. The benefits come naturally. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Surely you know, God will follow me. God will watch over me. God will uh, deliver me. The benefits, they're, they're, they're not our purpose. But the purpose for us is to be an overcomer. To overcome, that's the purpose. To be an overcomer. But we must know who we are. One of the things that I believe the enemy tries to do is steal our identity. I'm going to speak a little bit more about that in a minute. But Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, I like Paul because he was bold. 
You've got to be bold. You've got to, you've got to speak. Not fluffy. You got to speak boldly. You got to speak. We got to grit your teeth a little bit sometimes. You, 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 you've got to have a bit of tenacity about you. You, you, you've got to say some things sometimes, not just to please other people. You got to say things, what you believe about yourself. What you, what, what you believe is your destiny, your purpose. In Galatians 1, 1, Paul, uh, he said this, Paul, an apostle, not from man, not through man, but through Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like that, amen? Paul, an apostle, not from man, nor through a man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Galatians 1 4 says, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age or the world system. Even back there in Jesus' days, there were circumstances and situations and, and the world system and, the, and everything that we face, they were facing things similar to, in their day. But Jesus said that he gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us. Deliver us, Father, deliver us from ourselves. Deliver us from wrong thinking. Deliver us from, from what holds us back. Deliver us from, from, from things that get around us, insecurities, fear, and all that sort of stuff. You see, it's very, very difficult to rise up if you're full of fear. God's got to deliver us. See, a man didn't save you. Somebody says, oh, Joe Blow saved me. No, Joe Blow didn't save you. The church didn't save you. Jesus saved you, amen? You were saved by Jesus. The Holy Spirit convicted you and the blood of Jesus cleansed you. You believe that today? Out of all the billions of people on earth, Jesus saved you. That's how important you are. So you see, what, what, what you've got to do is, is there. you've got to puff your chest out a little bit. You you gotta walk a little bit different. Now, you gotta straighten your shoulders. You gotta puff your chest out a little bit. You gotta know who you are. You gotta you gotta say things that people might think, who does he think he is? You see, I I don't think I know. <laughs> if, if, if somebody say, Who do you think you are? Who, who do you think he is? Who do you think that is? I just recognize who you are over here. I did not see, I did not see who you were. Glory to God. How you going, young fella? How you going, darling? Amen. Hey, are you enjoying this? You are. <laughs> Don't you get too excited now? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Glory to God. God is so good, amen? God is so good. And you say, so you, you, you just puff your chest out a little bit. You just start to, start to declare who I am. I, 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 and, you, and you walk differently. You walk like a, like a champion. You, you walk like a winner. You don't walk around like a loser. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't cop the rubbish that the enemy wants to throw at you. You've got to push it away. You've got to push it off. You gotta to speak to the storms. Get out of my way. You're not coming my way. Get out of my face. And and push things back and, and start to live a little bit differently. Amen. That's what I believe anyhow. Out of all the billions of people on earth, Jesus saved you. That's how important you are. One of the greatest weapons that the enemy wants to steal is our identity. Paul didn't, didn't mess around. He knew who he was. He said, I'm an apostle, hallelujah. God touched me. God has set me free. You don't owe anything to man, but everything to Jesus, amen. The enemy says, you're a nobody. Shut your eyes and tell the truth. 
Then have you ever felt you're a nobody? Nobody's got. I, I was the only one watching. Nancy put her arm hand up. Anybody? Come on, shut your eyes. Nobody's. I just. I'm having a little glimpse. <laughs> come on, because that's that's the enemy. You think you're Robertson Crusoe or on the island, but man, you're not. The enemy is 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 he's a schemer, and if he can come, he will deceive you. I'm a nobody. I'm not important. I've heard that many so so many times. I'm a. I'm just a nobody. I'm, I, I'm a nothing. I'm a. I. Well, I want to say this. This way, you got to puff your shoulder up, and you got to say, "I am somebody." Hallelujah. I'm the. I'm a nobody. I am somebody. Hallelujah. I'm a nobody. I tell you what's the best way to go. I'm a nobody. I'm a. Nobody. I'm just a miserable worm. I'm a. See, when I first got saved in, in a particular church, and, and uh, we went up to communion, and we had to kneel at the thing, and. And they gave me the, the thing and that, and they said, repeat after me. I am nothing but a worm. I'm nothing but a worm. And you, can you imagine doing that every Sunday? But I want to tell you, this worm turned out into a chrysalis and then come out a butterfly, hallelujah, amen. <laughs> Didn't stay a worm, amen. I got out of that place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a worm. No, no, no. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. I am more than a conqueror. That's who I am. Amen. That'll put a smile on your face. You won't have to put a coat hanger in your mouth. Come on. You, you, can, you, can, you can start to say who Jesus says you are. I am more than a conqueror. I'm a brand new man. I'm a child of God. Oh, I am somebody. We, we started singing a song in Christian Outreach Center years and years ago. I am somebody. And, and people came around and they, some people there got really angry because they said, we're nobody. But I said, no. And, and we kept singing of them all. I am somebody. I'm a child of the King. Hallelujah. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Hallelujah. I am a joint heir with Jesus. That's who I am. And not only that, but we're called to be carriers of the presence of God. To carry the presence of God, the most precious commodity on planet Earth. And you and I, who sometimes think we're nobody, God says, this is how important I think you are. I am giving you the privilege to carry my presence. To carry my presence around. The presence of God. You get into, like, we went to that prayer meeting there today, and I, and, and I was in there, and I said, nothing like an empty room but you can fill it with the presence of God. Because as we walked into that room, all of a sudden it was no longer a room, it was a sanctuary. And the presence of God was in there, amen. Presence of God, and we could pray and touch God and worship and love Jesus. I'm called to be a carrier of the presence of God. His, his presence is meant to flow out of me. Jesus, on the last day of the feast, he stood up and he said, if this, if this is in uh, John 7, 37. He said, if you're thirsty, I want to put it in another way. If you're passionate for Jesus, if there's something stirring in your belly, if, 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 if there's a passion and, and a desire and, and something inside you that says, I, I'm going to rise up, I'm going to rise up above, out, even out of the ashes, I'm going to rise, hallelujah. Tenacity, boldness. Rise up, you people of power. So in the last day of the feast, Jesus stood to his feet and shouted with a loud voice, if you're thirsty, if you're passionate, 
If you're hungry for a revival, if you're ready for a move of God, come to me, hallelujah. Don't just come to church. Come to Jesus, hallelujah. Give Him your life. Throw your hands in the air and worship Him. Doesn't matter how you feel. Lift up those hands that hang down, hallelujah. Put a smile on your dog. Broad, shift, pull your shoulders back, hallelujah. Start to declare. And He said, out of your belly or out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Living water, the presence of God will flow out of you. God wants to flow out of us, amen. He just doesn't want to flow into us. He wants to flow through us. He wants to flow out of us. But you know what I found? There's, there's little demon beavers. Little demon beavers that block, stop the flow. We've got to blow them up, amen? We might blow a few up today, amen? <laughs> they block the river, they block the flow, they block the anointing, they block what God wants to do through you. The only difference between the Dead Sea and the Red Sea is that the Dead Sea has no outlet. Too many people just go to church and get fat. Wouldn't have enough power of God in them to blow the fuzz off a peanut. You've got to have an outlet, amen? You've got to go and tell somebody about Jesus. Tom was talking about this young fellow, Jack, that's coming to our church and he's, over, he's uh, somewhere in another town today. But he was, he was having a coffee with him and talking to him and, he, and, and next minute he noticed this girl walked by. Oh, she might have been working there. I don't know. I won't get the story straight. But she had a tattoo on her leg. And he jumped up straight away and he said, that tattoo is a Buddhist tattoo. You need Jesus. And he started witnessing to her. See, if you want life, you've got to start to have an outflow. Out, it doesn't say you will just build up. No, he said, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Amen. This spake he of the Spirit hadn't been yet given. You've got to go out and tell somebody. If you can't find somebody, find a dog and tell him. <laughs> find something. I used to go down and talk to my roosters. <laughs> I used to tell them that Jesus was going to save them, only to know that within the next week or two they were going to get their heads chopped off. But <laughs> I didn't let that worry me. <laughs> You've got to tell somebody. You've got to an outlet, you've got to start to talk it, you've got to start to release it. And you know, you might start with a trickle, but that that's what opens up the and, and blows the beavers out of the way. Amen. See the move of God, see God do something. We're called to be carriers of the presence and the power of God. God put his put this presence in earthen vessels. You find that in 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through to 10. I'm just going to, you can read that yourself if you're interested. Just for time's sake. We have these treasures in earth and vessels. He's put holy, tangible, powerful resources within us. The reason that He's put this in us. is so that we can declare that Jesus is alive. It's no good having a thing on your bumper saying honk if you love Jesus. That is not a good enough witness. It's not a goose. No, just for those that didn't get it, geese honk. <laughs> Betty, you're amazing. You got it. <laughs> Do 
You've got to have an outlet. You've got to have that thing going through you. Power of God. Then it's, it's, it, it's put this holy, tangible power within us to demonstrate to the world that He is God. Remember last week we were talking about that these are the tools of our trade. The, the anointing will fill every area that is yielded to God. Every area. So powerful is this infilling that it, that it can get into your bones. It can permeate your whole body. In 2 Kings 13, 20, verse 21, uh, 13, 20 to 21, I'm not going to read it. It'll be up there. Elisha died and they buried him. Sometime later, obviously a fair while later, the enemy came and attacked them and they were doing a funeral service. And because the enemy was going to attack them, they opened up the first grave they could find. It was Elisha's. And they threw him in. And when he hit the bones of Elisha, he, he jumped back to life again. I want that, amen? I want my bones to be full of the Holy Spirit. And Acts 5, uh, 15, amazing story here. It talks about, and Peter, they laid the sick out on the streets so that his shadow might come, fall over them or pass over them. And it would heal them. So strong was the anointing on his life. I remember one time I was in a meeting and uh, we were, uh, Clark was there and, and uh, there was a bunch of us there and, and uh, I was only a reasonably new Christian and uh, Clark was standing there talking to somebody and, and uh, I, I, I walked up to him and, and I went to put my hand to touch him, and as I did, a spark about that long left, come out of Clark and hit me on the finger and nearly knocked me flying. Boy, he got the power. I didn't realize that it was static electricity. <laughs> but I tell you what, for a long time I walked around that man. I did, true, I did. I, I thought, man, the power of God has got me. I got well away from him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me just say it again. This anointing will fill every area that is yielded to him. Amen. It laid, the, laid him out on the, it laid people out there believing that his shadow would heal them. That's how strong it was on him. I don't think it was a literal shadow that healed them, uh, but the presence that came from this earthen vessel. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Journals tell us of men like Wesley, Finney, Wigglesworth. If they walked into a store, walked somewhere or go somewhere, people would fall to the floor. Some would cry out for mercy. So great was the anointing on their lives. I'm, I'm wanting to paint a picture here of what is available to us. If, we, if we're prepared to be bold and start to say, I am not a nobody, I am a child of God. And that anointing is in the earthen vessels and God loved me so much that no matter the billions of people that are on this planet, one day he reached down and touched me. I want to tell you, if there's one thing that staggers me more than anything else, honestly, is that God saved me. That God, in all his mercy, and I, and I look at, at the literal thousands upon thousands on the Sunshine Coast that do not know Jesus, the, the literal thousands and thousands of people in Townsville where, where Nancy and I both got saved, that he touched me that He touched me, that He saved me. 
I didn't deserve it, but he saved me. I am so thankful for that. And it blows my mind that he did it. They walked in and people would fall to the floor. The anointing was so great on people's lives. In Acts 19, 11 and 12, Paul was so anointed that they took prayer cloths from his body. Prayer cloths, it says, and God did unusual and extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. In Mark 5, uh, 30, just beyond there and all around there, a woman received healing by touching the hem of his garment. We know this story. We know these stories. But what I want to really get to right now is you and me. In 2 Timothy 1.6, Paul said to Timothy, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. I want to say this again to you, Roy, to whoever you are, whatever your name is today, you've got to put it in there. I want to remind you. Paul said to Roy, Paul said to Neil, Paul said to Tom, Paul said to Nancy. Paul said to Steele, I want to remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. It's not out there, it's in you. Too many people today are looking out there. If I say to you, look to God, and most people look up in the heavens, I want to tell you God's in here. <laughs> if I'm still looking up in the heavens, He's still up there, but He's in here. God's in here. God's in here. Neil, you've got to stir up the gift. You've got to stir up the gift that's in you. That's in you. It's already in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. Stir up the gift that's in you through the laying on of hands. And he goes on after that. He says, God has not given to you a spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. Nothing will change the atmosphere around your world. I'm talking about your world. You, we all live in a, in a li little pocket that is our world that we live in. The things that you take home with you, the things you take to bed with you, the things that, 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 you, that surround your life. Nothing will change the atmosphere around your world and release you from the fear of man, failure, intimidation, and take you to the place. Take you to your place. Take you to the place. God has got a place for you in the kingdom. God has got a place for you in the church. God has got a place for you. Nothing will change the atmosphere around your world and release you from the fear of man and failure, intimidation, as you begin to rise up and take your place and kick some gold. Start to kick gold. Friend, the laying on of hands is so important. The laying on of hands that, that God would, would move on our lives and release it. I don't, I, look, I... As soon as I walked away from there, that intimidation tried to get hold of me because, you see, I was just going to make a statement. But as I was making that there, see, none of us are exempt and there's no place where we're exempt. The enemy will try to stop you because I was just going to start to speak about laying my hands on you to release the gift that's on you. And as I started there, it was like the enemy said, but who do you think you are? Who, who, you, you, you stand there and, and say that, and, and immediately that, but you see, you just got to keep pushing through. You got to keep pushing through, because you see, that's where the enemy will try to stop us. I am a child of God, amen? I carry the, the anointing, I have mantle and it doesn't matter who you are 
you carry the same anointing and you carry the same mantle and you carry that which is needed to release people. Stir up the gift that's in you. I, I, I interpret that scripture a little bit because, you see, I don't believe that I can give you a gift. The gift is already in you. The gift is in you. Stir up the gift that is in you. Stir up the gift that's in you. I cannot give you a gift. I can, I can impart into your life. I can do stuff like that, but I cannot give you a gift. They're already in you. But I believe that that scripture goes by the laying on of hands that we can stir up that gift. Stir up that gift. And we see it week by week as people come on the altar. And people get stirred up again. Our friend, I want to tell you, it's a time not to sit back. It's not a time to, to let lethargy get around our lives. It's a time to be bold. It's a time to get stirred. It's a time to release the gifts, amen. Stir up the gifts. And sometimes there, I don't feel like it, but I stir up the gift, hallelujah. I'm human. I am not... You know, Sunday by Sunday, I, I'm not no different to you. Sometimes I don't feel like coming to church. But Nancy says, you've got to go. I said, why? She said, because you're the pastor. <laughs> no, that's not true. But the thing is this, is that, that I am human too, but I, you've got to stir yourself. You've got to stir yourself. <laughs> Amen. Is anybody getting this message? You gotta, if you don't, the, the chairs will start doing whirly birds, amen. I'm praying the one that you're sitting on will do that. Anyway, come on, let's stand to our feet today. I want to open up this altar. I want to open up this altar. We're going to pray for you. Tom's going to come out and help me. We're going to pray for you today. We're going to believe God for you today. We're going to believe for us to stir up gifts. Stir up gifts inside you. Stir up gifts. If we're really serious, we want to stir up those gifts within us. Amen? And, and it doesn't matter how many times you come out on an altar. Just come, 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 come. Feel free to come. Stirring up the gifts and by the laying on of hands. By the laying on of hands, we want to stir up gifts inside us. It's an, it's a, it's an act of the Spirit. Father, stir up the gifts. Let them be chatterboxes for you, Jesus. <laughs> Let them talk about the goodness of God and the majesty of their God. Oh, stir up the gifts inside them, Father. Stir up the gifts in Jesus' name. I'll give you all the praise, give you all the glory.